Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues uh, Nigel here in the studios with me and uh, Sonia is uh, out there all the way in Delhi. Sonia, hi, morning. Nigel, morning. Morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning, Prashant. Good morning, Nigel. So everyone's talking about election jitters, right? I thought, let me come to Delhi and see what the big <laughs> fuss is all about. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, it is. it has been really tricky for the market last few days. But let's see, we have a long day ahead. Nigel, morning. Morning, Sonia. Well, uh, Prashant, let's get straight to the action then. Absolutely. Let's uh, get straight to the action. And, uh, you know, uh, it was looking bad. It was looking, no other way to put it, it was looking bad uh, yesterday. The Nifty broke through multiple supports. And, uh, you know, uh, we've been saying this from the beginning of this week, of Monday onwards, uh, and, uh, you know, that this is not global. Globally, things are looking much better. This is very much a local issue. And uh, I remember on Tuesday morning saying that there is this you know, almost a slow burning kind of an idea that maybe uh, the prospects uh, are not as clear cut, as thumping as many were making out, out to be as far as elections are concerned. Uh, so maybe that some of that worry, of course, is showing up in a more pronounced kind of a way. I'll just start with, I don't usually refer to flows, but because the numbers are so large, I'll kind of st start with uh, that uh, that's the data set. So FII's yesterday uh, sold about 7,000 crores worth of stock, nearly 7,000 crores worth of stock in the cash market. That's a large number, right? I mean, locals, uh, they bought about 5,600 crores in the month of May so far, and the numbers really add up. I've just taken the exchange rate from yesterday. Uh, the number in dollar terms is 2.75 sell uh, for FIIs, and for locals, that's $2 billion which of inflows. This is dollar billion numbers, and these are some really large numbers which have uh, come through. Uh, just in the in the course of May so far. FIs, of course, have been selling before that as well, but it's kind of intensified this month. And we're just kind of sort of still in the initial uh, part, 10 days into May. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the, the FNO position, FIs and what they're doing in index futures has also seen a bit of a dramatic change. So it, uh, from day before yesterday, as of yesterday's close, FI net shots in index futures has jumped almost 50%. That's now nearly about 1, 1.57 lakh contracts. You know, get, you get to about two lakh, two and a half odd lakh contracts, then you start to get to an extreme and then you start to wonder whether this is it and the market has got perhaps a little bit of uh, shots in the system to support any bounces, etc., which may start to come in. Uh, but uh, we are, of course, in, we, we're getting to that a big jump that we've seen, as I said, uh, in trade yesterday. The global, global picture, I mean, for what it, it's worth, really, and I think you'll have to put it that way because it's not mattered. The S&P is up half a percent. The Nasdaq is up about a quarter percent. Uh, the dollar index was down uh, a quarter percent. The USD 10-year uh, was down four basis points. Oil prices, they rose and they're at about $84, $84 per barrel mark. That's the Brent oil prices. As I'm saying again, and I repeat, the issue is not global. It's not yields. It's not dollar. It's not the Fed. It's not rates. It's basically local politics and, of course, the election result, which is only, of course, due in the first week of June. Just circle all of this back after what we've done in the market uh, and, uh, you know, just from last, from this Tuesday, uh, where we left off this Tuesday, we've, we've, uh, we're down, uh, actually, from Monday's close, we're down almost 600 points, right, on the Nifty. So where does it leave us? The support for the Nifty uh, is from a rising, ja from the trend line, which is a rising trend line from the lows of January. And the chart is up on your screen, which will il illustrate that point amply. So what I've done is, this is the Nifty daily chart. Uh, the first, the, the, the start of this particular trend line is January lows, which is 21,137. The next touch point is in the month of April, which is 21,777. And as of yesterday's close, we basically got to 21,932. Uh, the support is 21,930. So we are actually at a very, very critical support level in January, in April. From these levels, the market did see a decent bounce. Uh, so, you know, hopefully... Third time lucky, right? And uh, you perhaps, uh, you are in a position after the sell-off that we've seen. Uh, the uncertainty still will continue and no one knows till we know. That is in the first week of June. But you're at a critical support level and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll need to see if that gets defended. If that gets defended and you get a daily positive close, then we can start to talk about high levels. What are those levels for the Nifty on the way up? Levels are 21, 22, 218. These are very near-term levels. That's the 20 hourly and then 22,300 plus, which is the 40 hourly exponential average. 
Now, on the Nifty uh, Bank, the similar kind of supports, not from the lows of January, but from the lows of February. Uh, and uh, it's on, again on a rising trend line that stands at 47,230. Again, very close by, about 250 odd points away from where we left off yesterday. Hopefully, I mean, we are at that, uh, at that level, at that point where, I mean, these, some of these levels start to get respected. I mean, and of course, uh, the extent of the bounce from there, we'll have to see. On the way up, levels here are at the 20 hourly and on your screen, 48,026. And then the 40 hourly uh, exponential, which is about 48,310. As I say, as I always do, all in the vicinity, nearby kind of levels, because, of course, we are looking at this on a day-to-day -day basis. There is a bounce, which is about 50-odd points, which is the gift nifty is indicative of. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you, if you get that kind of a bounce, at some point there'll be sort of one leg down, and then, uh, you know, you it, it's, it's possible that you start to uh, find some support, find your feet, uh, although it may take a few days for us to really decipher the trend in any meaningful way from here. Sonia. Absolutely. Prashant, you know, I think the moot point is that there's no real reason to panic at the moment, right? Uh, there's definitely caution in the system, no two ways about that. I mean, all the cues are indicating that there could be some more downside for sure. The Nifty is at a two-month low. It closed below that 22,000 level yesterday. Uh, this is the first signs of major selling for sure. But this comes on the back of a 13% rise that the Nifty has seen in the last six months. It's been a relentless rise on the upside. And this is the first signs of a pullback, which is routine in any kind of market up move. Now, the thing is that um, I think the best thing to do is to wait and watch because there is definitely election jitters. Uh, the counting days on the 4th of June, you could get a lot of volatility. The India VIX has been spiking up as well. All of that put together, uh, definitely some caution, but no real reason to panic, I would think. The one thing that's working in our favor, uh, okay, I'll come to that. But before that, there is large FI selling, as you can see on your screen. In the month of May so far, almost 23,000 crores has been sold by FII's. But the one thing that's working in our favor is strong global queues. Uh, so if you look at it yesterday as well, right, the Dow rallied for seven straight days. And yesterday, the Dow saw a 330-point rally. So the best thing to do is to wait and watch, not get too carried away with emotion or sentiment. Yes, there could be some more downside, but that's also something that's routine in an uptrending market. Having said that, some stocks to watch out for. Um, today, you have lots of results coming through. There is um, Tata Motors, Aisha Motors, Sipla, a couple of capital goods names as well. So we'll keep our eyes on, on that. And I'm also looking at SBI. After the very strong showing, there are multiple upgrades that have come in on SBI. Uh, so Nomura, for example, has raised their target price to 1000 from 825 earlier. So I'm also going to watch out for SBI this morning. But uh, Nigel, there's a lot that's going on in this market. And of course, volatility has been on the rise too. Uh, what are you picking up? Well, uh, you know, the fear is that India is decoupling uh, from the global markets because the Dow is on a seven-session winning streak. But I'll tell you what, that's not the case. We're waiting by for a big political income outcome. And that's why, in fact, there is some kind of uncertainty. Why the market seeing selling pressure, particularly yesterday? The institutional net sell number continues at around 1,000 to around 1,500 crores. So the DI and FI number put it together. Yesterday, you had the expiry-related factor as well that did play out. And the 20 DMA, that's got breach on both the key indices. That's the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank. Just want to make one point out here. Yes, we have seen a bit of a correction of closer around 800 points on the Nifty. But this fall that we are seeing, you know, even in the broader markets, it's coming actually on relative relatively lower volumes because the average volumes this week so far is around 1 lakh odd. The previous week it was 1.22 lakh odd. So the fall is not coming on very, very large volumes. And in case, you know, the, the outcome is positive that uh, the markets are working with, that the BJP gets another term, then the bounce as well could be as sharp. So just keep that in mind. This fall has come on low volumes. The India VIX, we have been highlighting this. It continues to spike up. It's up for the 11th straight session. And you're expecting more of the same getting into the election verdict as well. So that's another factor. We saw this in 2019. And currently, I'm still leading that. We'll see a repeat of 2019. That CSM some selling pressure. The VIX spikes up. And post the outcome, all of that reverses as well. What did the FIs do yesterday? They added closure on 65,000 long contract, uh, short contracts in trade yesterday, which took their short positioning to around 67%. And that chart should come up for you on the screen. Now the net short positions are around 1.56 lakh contracts. But just want to alert our viewers, it's not a like-to-like -like comparison. You'll say that it's already at 1 lakh contracts, go in and there and buy. Want to make this point that the contract size itself changed on the Nifty. The Nifty contract size came down from around 50 to around 25 approximately. So that's why, in fact, you know, this 1.56 lakh contracts effectively is around 75,000 contracts. So just keep that in mind, we're not yet at that one lakh contract mark, which we normally look at. 
And the gross positioning is telling you the picture because currently there are 4.5 lakh contracts, the gross, that's the buy and the, you know, the short, long and the short contracts put it together. Normally that number is around 300,000 odd. So that itself is telling you it's because of the contract factor, the change over there, that's why it appears we're at around 1.56 lakh contracts, but actually we're at around 75,000 contracts. The Nifty Bank, if we need to bounce, it needs to come to the party. It's down 5% just in the last few sessions. Seven straight sessions, it's under pressure. SBI's numbers were good. HDFC Bank has reached a crucial support zone. So that one needs to bounce for the Nifty as well to sustain it. So let's pull up the levels you're looking at on the Nifty Bank uh, then. The 20 and the 50 DMA, they become the near-term resistance levels. We're very close to the 50 DMA. The 20 DMA is going to be important. And on the downside, the 100 DMA, 47,200. The Nifty, the PCR is at around 0.9 odd. Yesterday, one contract got expired, so I've not included that. It's holding at around 0.9. And the effective levels you're looking at, the swing low becomes very, very important. That's in April that we saw, 21,778. That's the crucial level. Resistance is up for you on the screen. So if you're an adventurous trader, and if you see that Nifty, you know, at some point of time, sees a bit of a dip, you look to get in, you keep your stop loss, you're, uh, you know, out there, and hope for a bit of a bounce. The Nifty Bank is the crucial one in today's session, Prashant. Well, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we'll sort of uh, have uh, more on uh, this uh, as we go along because there is a lot to discuss. I mean, the big headline, of course, what is happening in uh, the market itself, uh, even as we sort of get through the earnings season now. Well, let's get you some money market views uh, here. Rupee, on the rupee, this is Lakshman and V, a federal bank, who says that feeble employment data prints in the U.S. have weighed on the dollar index and thus all peers traded higher versus the USD yesterday. The Davish Bank of England is now inching closer to the first rate cut since 2020. The rupee traded in a very narrow range yesterday but should be supported by dollar index weakness. He expects the USD INR pair to trade in a range of between 83.35 to 83.68 to the dollar in the next few sessions before US CPI data uh, that is due next week. All right, and on the bonds, Lakshmanan says the government bond yields traded marginally lower, tracking US peers. As there were no significant domestic triggers, weaker than expected economic data from the US has raised the odds of rate cuts by the Federal Reserve this year. Markets now await the US and India inflation numbers for April. In the coming sessions, he expects the 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.08 to 7.18%. Okay, all right. Uh, well, I think we can uh, run you through all the top 10 stocks that we're looking at in today's trading session. Let's run you through the list. BPCL, SRF, Max Life, about uh, India, so with a uh, small finance bank, all of them will be reacting to positive news flow. And we're split down the middle. On the negative side, you're looking at escorts, MGL, HDFC Life, SBI Life, and ICSA Proof.